Hey everyone, I'm Almar of AlmarsGuides.com and in this video here I'm going to be giving you some auction house tips and tricks in Guild Wars 2. So this is my one of my first videos back in Guild Wars 2 in a very long time where I'm giving auction house tips and tricks and uh, I wanted to explain a little bit of what I've been doing and basically share that information with you guys. So the first thing that I have been doing is I've been doing very long term buying and selling which is uh, I expect to be selling and yeah basically selling these items over the course of maybe a year year and a half maybe even longer for some of them but I expect the bulk of them will sell in that amount of time so the items that I am talking about are these like uh, thin legging padding bronze pauldron casing rugged goggle padding all of these you can see that I'm buying them for very cheap I'm also buying these uh, blue items because the skins w and also these uh, exotics because the skins were locked for me. So I'm buying it and then salvaging it. As you can see, I, I got this for less than the price of one glob of ectoplasm, which is also something I'm going to talk about in this video. But I've been buying all of these and also stuff like this. Steel plated inscriptions, also like insignias and basically a whole bunch of trade skill crafting materials. And you can see I'm getting good prices on all of these quite good prices actually like usually most of them are under one silver a piece for the the crafting items and then let me show you my sell list some of them i'm actually already starting to sell like this steel splint helmet casing i think i got this for under one silver and i'm already selling them for almost five silver a pop bronze chain boot panels i've got i know for a fact i got them for under one silver and i'm selling them for two silver 43 copper a pop gossamer coat panel 25 silver 60 copper i think this one I, I didn't like i think that was one i pulled out of my bank and uh bronze chain boot padding again ori jalcom gauntlet plates two silver 42 copper so this these are all very long term buying and reselling like i said i'm probably going to be selling these for a year in total and what i like to do is depending on the prices like uh these I am probably buying these. This is probably my buy order right here. One silver 25. And I'm selling them for, as you can see, over double the price. And uh, how fast you want to make money is up to you. Like if you buy them at one silver 25, you can list them at four silver 97 copper and sell them, start selling them within like 24 hours. Or you can list them a little bit higher if you want to make a little bit more money. Alternatively, what you could do is list like 25 at this amount, 25 at 5 silver, you know, 25 at like 5 silver, 10 copper, and just go down the list. So the main reason that I am going to be recommending stuff like this, well, first let me say, and if you want to make money fast, don't do this. Because this is going to be a very slow method of making money. Like I said, I expect it to sell over the course of an entire year. That is a very long time, and most people probably won't even be playing Guild Wars 2 one year down the road. But if you're one of those people that will, and you know you will, then it's a, you know, it's one of the ways that you can make money. So like this thin boot sole right here, I most likely bought mine somewhere in here, like 18 copper, 17 copper, and I flipped them for one silver, um, one silver, 17 copper, one silver, 18 copper, somewhere in there, and it's it's a small profit. The main reason, the main thing that I benefit from doing this is I'm turning my capital, my current bit of money, into even more money. And I don't really care that I have to wait a year because I, I plan to be playing this game for that long again. And even if I, you know, take a break in between that period, I, my auctions are still going to be selling when they do sell. So I'm not too concerned with the time it's going to take me to uh, make money off of those items. And that's the main benefit of doing you know the way that I'm doing it now so without a side I want to tell you another way that you can make eh, moderately long-term money and or just save money so what I would highly recommend you do is you go through your entire material storage and place buy orders for items this might seem a little self or like uh, I guess self-explanatory but a lot of people actually don't do this and something you should keep in mind is the prices of items drop a lot lower a lot faster than you expect some items like even this bronze ingot here can travel 20 copper a day up or down uh, and that will obviously fill buy orders all the way down like I would prop what I normally do it depends on the item but 
Like I would do a buy order for 20% less than current ask asking price. So I would do one like right here, maybe like 80 in the 80 coppers because one silver is the, the current. And the reason that I would do something like this, well, it's actually, uh, there's multiple reasons I would do something like this, but I'm not really interested in reselling these items when I get them. What I mostly want them for is to have in case I ever need them, because whenever you need these items, if you go out of, like, let's look at these. These ones are a bit more expensive. If I went out of my way and I need iron, like, say, like, I need it now in order to craft and I buy 250 of them, I'm obviously paying way more. I'm paying, you know, half a silver over current uh, buying price. So if I did this instead, if I went in here and I made a buy order for two silver, 45 copper, I'm getting them for like almost one silver less than the current sell price. But this allows me to save money long term. And I'm, I know for a fact I'm going to need iron. I'm going to need a lot of these in order to make ascended gear because a lot of these are used in the Deldramore steel ingots. So this is a good way to save money long term. And also you can make money off of this long term if you do decide to sell the items or, you know, whatever it may be in the future. But I would highly recommend, this is the, the tip number two, I guess you could say. Go through your material storage and place buy orders on everything that you need. And some items are obviously going to be more than others. Like uh, if we look at some of the leather down here, like the secured hide, uh, hardened leather square, you can see if, if we place the buy order right here, we would be able to make money if we sold, then turned around and sold it immediately. I would actually list it at the 23 silver, 70 copper, because that's a better margin. But as you can see, we w like I said, we would be able to make money if we decided to flip it right away. But alternatively, w we need so much of this for crafting in the game, especially if you're going to be somebody who's going for future legendary armor and um, you want to, you know, make that armor or make the weapons once they actually come out, then you may want to place buy orders for some of these now. You can see it's almost 50 gold for a buy order, which is... It's quite a bit. It's going to be, you know, at least a day's worth of farming, probably. So keep that in mind when it comes to placing the buy orders. Now, for people that have not a lot of gold, you're going to want to keep with the low items. Um, basically, like these, the ores we were just looking at, they have decent margins, but it's not, you know... It's not a lot of money. You're not going to make a ton of money. You're going to make maybe like five to ten percent of your like uh, of what you invested as profit. So that might not be appealing for some of you. So that's going to I'm going to now move into my final tip, which is uh, it's going to take into consideration some of the upcoming market changes that we're looking at. So right now, when I, at the time of recording this video, it is currently January first of 2024 happy new year to everybody who's listening to it today and uh coming up in guild wars 2 they are going to be adding new legendary weapons or sorry uh new legendary armor which is going to be um unlocked i think in within six months something like that and they're also adding in new weapon sets not legendary weapons the, but every class is going to get access to a brand new weapon and this is going to have some effects on the auction house, as you could imagine. So, there's going to be some things like the superior sigil of force right here. So, anybody who's been paying attention, superior sigils of forces used to go for one gold right before Secrets of the Obscure came out. And right now they're going for a little bit over two gold, as you can see. The price is going to keep going up on these. And the reason the price is going to keep going up is because new weapons as people experiment with new weapons change weapons do this do that you know roll another class to see if they want to play you know necromancer sword or whatever it may be they're going to be using stuff like this they're going to be using sigils popular sigils sigil of force and whatever other popular sigils there are so what i would recommend you do if you want to make let me actually try to get this sorted properly because it's not show it's showing me uh stuff i don't want to see sigils there we go so looking at these at these sigils what 
I would recommend you do if you're somebody out there who wants to make now money, as I would say, basically money within the next month, something like that, or within the next few weeks, you can make buy orders for stuff like these, superior sigils of force. So you could buy, you know, 25 to 45 of these at one gold 64 silver, and you will guaranteed sell them at the two gold nine silver, which is a decent profit. And you can do that with basically every type of sigil or, you know, weapon, weapon sigil that you would want. Um, armor, I would say it's not, I don't think they're going to be going up as much in value because legendary armor is a lot harder to acquire than just a new weapon. When you get a new weapon, it's, it's easy to um, replace the sigil on it, or I should say... There's going to be a lot of people getting new weapons versus a lot of people getting new armor. The The grind for legendary armor is very significant. However, in order to test out a new weapon, all you need to do is buy a new weapon and then plop a sigil into it. So that's something you're definitely going to want to keep in mind. The price of sigils are going to keep going up. Some sigils might go up slower or different than other sigils, depending on which builds and classes are the most popular. For example, if uh, condition damage is more popular than strike damage, you might find sigils of torment going up more than sigil of force. Vice versa, if, if uh, strike damage is more popular than condition damage, you're going to find sigils of force going up more. From my own um, experimentation and also watching the past few months, sigils of force are the main thing that I have done buying and reselling with and i've made a decent chunk of change from just doing them if you would like to copy me and do that by all means i'm probably not going to do that anymore because i am investing in other things right now experimenting with other things and also trying different avenues but i know this one is still effective so and there's a few other things that are going to be going up in a uh, price too let me actually open my material storage again so in order to make the legendary armor, you're going to need a lot of gifts of uh, fangs, gifts of bones, gifts of blood, gifts of dust, uh, gift of scales, gift of totems. You're going to need all of those gifts. And all of these gifts require, I think it's starting right here at this tier, yes. So it requires this tier of crafting mats, this tier of crafting mats, and then this tier and this tier. So basically it requires these four tiers of crafting mats. So that's going to result in these crafting mats going through the roof. Um, or I should say some of these crafting mats going through the roof. So looking at these right here, you can see that they're still kind of somewhat low in price. They are going up in price though, which is uh, good for us because we will be able to place buy orders for these and then we will be able to either sit on them for a little bit or flip them whenever we want to. So I'm going to place some buy orders now for some of these. Did that go through? I don't think it went through. I'm going to place buy orders now for some of these. Because I am also working on legendary armor. And as you can see, people have already kind of uh, started doing this. Usually there's not so many buy orders. But but there are. <laughs> because everybody is... Uh, people are starting to wise up and jump on this train. So there's a few other things that are... Uh, let me actually check to see it, my amounts before I just start spending. There's a few other things you should pay attention to as far as legendary armor being on the horizon and coming out very, very soon. Um, globs of ectoplasm are currently going up through the roof. And I have a feeling that will probably continue at least a little bit more. I don't know exactly where the end price for globs of ectoplasm will be. Really, nobody can actually tell you that because nobody's a soothsayer as far as I'm aware. And uh, so globs of ectoplasm are one thing you can, an, or I should say are another thing you can buy and invest in. And also, if you look at these, like I said, all of these items, essentially pick maybe a few of these and then, you know, buy what you can, flip them in the future. If you, there's another video on my YouTube channel where I talk about how to make more money off of just selling, uh, you know, basic materials like this. Usually what I do is I like to list them in waves. So let's, uh, let's say here for the large claws, I would do, you know, maybe 25 at 35 copper, 25 at 40, 25 at 45, 
For this item in particular, I might not do that because there's probably going to be thousands. There's actually not a, I thought there would be way more. Usually you hit like a roadblock where there's like, yeah, like this, where there's like 150,000 available. That's quite a bit and it's gonna take a while for all of them to sell. But that's something you can keep in mind. And also cycling back to my original tip at the start of this video or one of the things I brought up. So you may have noticed with globs of ectoplasm currently going up in price, there is a, or I should say the auction house has not caught up yet to where they are. And that is very common when something like this happens. When an item shoots up, it takes a while for the auction house to catch up. So what I like to do and this is kind of like two birds with one stone, but see this like here, the Valkyrie uh, Crate Warhammer. I don't have it unlocked, the craftable skin. You can see it's skin locked. So what I would like to do is I like to go through the auction house and for all of these items that I have or don't have, I should say, the skin for, I would place buy orders. So you can see right here, the ugly stick. I don't have the skin. And also if we look at the price of it, the price, the buying rate right, for, right now for it is under the price of one glob of ectoplasm. So, if we buy this item and salvage it and we get one glob of ectoplasm, we're basically making our money back. On top of that glob of ectoplasm, you can also get a, a variety of other goodies from salvaging an exotic item. And that includes the one of the like uh, crafting reagents that it's made with on top of a few other things like, you know, the the either mithril, wood, or whatever it may be that you're going to be getting. But there's a few things you can get from actually salvaging them. But this is another way to, like I said, two birds, one stone. Like right here too, if we look at salt spray hammer, we could actually buy 20 of these, like this one guy is doing, for 25 silver, 10 copper. And uh, you can see a few people before him have also had a similar idea of buying like 25 in a row. And they're probably doing that because they want to salvage them for the globs of ectoplasm, which is actually a rather smart idea because considering the price of globs is going up and up and up and up and the price of these isn't going up at the same rate, it's a way to make money while also unlocking the skins that you need for your characters or skins that you would want, I should say. And then keep an eye out too on the level of the item like this one right here the it's not when we salvage it it's not going to give us a glob of ectoplasm because it's only level 65 so that's something to keep in mind but this is basically just something you could do like i said before if you want to unlock skins for your characters and also make a little bit of extra money by salvaging the items for globs of ectoplasm occasionally you'll find an item like this one for example carrion flame bow there so this 18 silver right now if that's about half the price of a glob of ectoplasm so you might want to buy you know 10 to 20 of them and then you know test your luck salvaging them for to see if you actually get a glob uh and you sometimes you probably will make money sometimes you probably won't make money alternatively instead of salvaging it you could always relist it and sell it but then you don't get the skin so something to keep in mind and another thing to keep in mind as well is if you have black line salvage kits left over from back when you used to get them as daily rewards, you can look for items that have a uh, sigil of force or a sigil in it that is particularly valuable. And then you can place buy orders for that item and then salvage it, get the sigil of force as well as a few globs of ectoplasm as well as you know whatever else you managed to get while salvaging it. And there you go, then you've made a decent chunk of money. But those are the tips and tricks that I have for right now. I am going to be doing more videos in the future, auction house videos that are going to cover tips, tricks, and strategies to help you guys make more money in this game. And uh, yeah, basically all of the old videos that I used to do for Guild Wars 2, where I talk about various ways to make money, I'm going to be doing that again now that I'm back. But anyway, that's all for this one. Hopefully this video helped you guys out. If it did, be sure to leave me a like because that helps me out. And aside from that, I will catch you guys around in future Guild Wars 2 videos. Peace.